Good morning. Welcome to Full of Faith Ministries, a place where we love people and we love God. If you're a first time guest, please give us a wave or come in online. Welcome. Happy birthday to all of those born in the month of October. If you're celebrating a birthday this month, give us a wave or come in online. Happy birthday, everyone. Come out on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. to our Faith Fill-Up services as we study kingdom culture. And stay connected to the Full of Faith community by subscribing to our YouTube channel. Our channel name is Full of Faith Ministries. Full of Faith Life Groups are now online, and we are in need of life group leaders. If interested, please see Lady J after service and help us spread the good news. Upcoming events. Want to be water baptized? Then sign up for our Wash Sunday. Sunday, October 31st, immediately following our 10 a.m. service. Sign up in the lobby at the information desk today. For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases Him. Philippians 2, 13. Thank you, and have an amazing week. She was over there laughing because uh, she saw the, the, the guy on the announcement. She was like, well, why he looking like that? Because he up under that water. You know, so I had to explain to her that when, you, when we water baptize you, you know, uh, you have to submerge the person. You know, they, you, there's no getting your hair washed, you know. You got to go all the way down up under there. So she was like, wow, you got to look like that? I said, baby, I don't know. He's just... That's why we was over there laughing at the picture over there. So, well, that's just for a little inside, letting y'all know what was so funny over there with her. You know, because uh, God is good anyhow, ain't it? Yeah. How many of you have you been water baptized before since you've been saved? You know, since you've been saved, good, good, good. Um, we, we're going to, um, uh, the end of this month, we're going to have our wash Sunday. So, I mean, right after service, uh, we're going to uh, do water baptism. So, we encourage you and anybody else that you know that, that desires to be water baptized, um, you can sign up, uh, send an email, send something, you know, let us know. Uh, you can let us know that we can make sure we prepare for you. Amen. I know we had a few people that mentioned, mentioned it to us about being water baptized, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Amen. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, keep our brothers and sisters in prayer. Uh, we want to make sure that, you know, we always... Um, Submerge, I'll use that submerge again. Submerge our partners, uh, family and friends in prayer and with prayer. Uh, because the Bible does, you know, the Bible does not say, say, say this, but we say it all the time. We grew up, you know, prayer changes things. Y'all remember that song? Prayer, prayer. <laughs> prayer. Yeah, go ahead now. You know, hey, you ain't having church till you start sticking them hands out like this here. And they, they legs get tired, and they get stiff, and they do a dip, like, whoo. <laughs> oh, boy. And then when they tired, they walk around, whoo. They catch their breath back, then you got to dip again. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Come on, let's stand, let's stand. Uh, it's okay. Y'all don't like having fun in church. It is okay. Well, it's the truth. Don't act like that. Now, some of y'all probably didn't go to those churches, but but I, I did. Sure enough, did. I did. And it ain't, I ain't ashamed of it. Because we, we came for them churches. You know, uh, you know, people call them the holiness church. You know, but I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, so it is what it is. Amen. 
Come on, we're going to go ahead and pray, and we're going to get right into the word here, uh, and then go from that point. Uh, Father, we thank you, Lord God, for your word today. We thank you for this day. This day be made. We shall rejoice and be glad. We thank you for every person that is here under the sound of my voice, Lord God, and those that are viewing with us and uh, in our live stream audience, Father God. We thank you, Father, for your word this morning. I decrease, I ask Holy Spirit to speak through my mind, speak through my vocal cords. And I pray, Lord God, that your people will hear the word and they will receive the word. They will believe it, act upon it. And I know without a doubt, Lord God, their life will never be the same, Father God. We thank you, Lord God, for this, this series and this topic that we're covering, uh, having a kingdom mindset, having kingdom faith, Lord God. Father, that is the most important thing, Lord God, is faith. And I know people may say other things, but we, you have to believe. If you don't believe, then there is nothing that you can do for us, Lord God, outside of faith. Because your word decrees and declares that, Father God. Without faith, it is impossible to please you. So we thank you right now for your people hearing it. And that's how faith does come. Romans 10, 17 says that. And we believe and know without a doubt that your people will hear what you have to say today. And I thank you, Lord God, that their lives will never be the same. And I know without a doubt that they will grab this word. They will place it in whatever situation it is that they're dealing with in their life, Lord God. And their life will be transformed. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. Come on, if you don't mind, put your hands together. Let's give God some praise. Come on, you can do a little bit better than that. Come on, you can do a little bit better than that. All right, God bless you. God bless you all. You all may be seated. Am I low? Oh, because you all sound a little low there, so I didn't know if it was something on my ears or what. Can you give me a little more volume, too? You know, because uh, maybe it's me, you know, and I don't want to scream. And yell, you know, unnecessarily. <laughs> and, um, you know, once again, I'm glad that, yeah, that's how, there we go, yeah. I'm glad that you all are, are here with us this morning. You know, I was watching um, LSU and Auburn game the other day. You know, they call it, they call it Death Valley. And uh, my gosh, man, you know, people are all out and everywhere, unmasked and all. Amen. You know, um, I know people People say certain things, and I was listening to, the, I was watching this one guy, you know, uh, on the YouTube thing, and, and it's amazing because he, he showed a, a picture of Mike Todd in the conference, and then he was showing these people in, in the stadiums and everything else, and, you know, uh, in the stadium, they didn't have masks on. They were deed up. We say deed up. That means it was a lot of people, and, uh, you know, in the church, you know, everybody had masks on and everything else, you know, so... He had a little choice words to say about that, you know, like, hey, something wrong with this picture. They had a football game with no mask. We in the church masked up. Who believe in God and who's not? You know, I know, I know, I heard that. I heard somebody say that. But yeah, they got to use wisdom. But last time I checked, I have not heard an outbreak in any football game yet. Okay, I'm just checking because if that was the case, they would change their, 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 their guidelines. You know, a lot of people are going to be going to these football games on Sunday. And they're going to be deed up, no social distance, without no mask. Amen? You know, so I just wanted to mention that to you. The point of why I said that is, you know, we wear masks around here, you know, just to make, you know, people comfortable and so forth and so on. But uh, don't, that's no excuse for you not to come into the house and, and so forth and so on. And I know people say, oh, the church, you know, uh, uh, you know, you can have church and not be in the building. That's true, too. Praise God. But some of us need to get out of our house. I mean, because we, we got some, you start watching all kind of TVs. You had an iPad was looking at full of faith, and then you got something else on your TV playing. You know, and then, you know, but then we've come to the house when we need something. So we know when to come to the house or, and when not to come. But that's neither here or there. So I want to encourage people, it's okay to go to church. I encourage you to go to a house of worship. It is very important. Because uh, it's nothing like, yeah, I don't care what people say, and it's not, it's not necessarily what's required, because at the end of the day, can I tell you this here? I'm, I'm going to say this here. I know some religious people are not going to like this, but serving God is not required. Reading your word is not required. If it was, everybody that does not would be dead. So that's free will. So let's stop saying, well, I don't have to go. Ain't like the Lord going to, the Lord ain't going to do nothing. With the part, that's your choice. So, but we make we got to make decisions and make a choice to do the right thing 
and we got to make the choice to do the right, the decision, whatever we feel that's best for our personal life and our own life. We can't superimpose anything because God doesn't do that. We can't rule over people's life because God doesn't do that. God gives you free will. We're going to give you free will. But here at Full of Faith, I don't know. We believe in God for some great things. Yes, you know, <clears throat> I heard somebody said early this morning that about their small mind, and I was wiggling all in my chair because they dumb, they the mind, they mind, we're going to put some scar tissue in their mind. We're going to stretch that mind. Amen? Yeah. God is good. Come on, if you don't mind, turn to Romans chapter 12, verse number 1, and 1 through 3. Uh, we're going to read that in the New, New Living Translation. Um, one, I, I, I'm telling you right now, I know I am on an assignment to speak to somebody this morning. I don't know who that body is, but I just believe that whoever going to grab this word this morning, I'm telling you right now, your life will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to go ahead and read this focal scripture here, Romans 12, verses 1 through 3. In the New Living Translation, And we're going to go ahead and hear what God has to say. Abraham, verse 1, Abraham was humanly speaking the founder of our Jewish nation, what did he discover about being made right with God? If, he, if his good deeds had made him acceptable to God, he would, he would have had something to boast about. But that was not God's way. For the scripture tells us Abraham believed, no, what am I reading? Y'all wasn't going to say nothing? No, that ain't Hebrew, that's Roman. But I do have that script. That's my next one. But I, that's why I'm so far. I'm like, and I'm reading. I'm like, that ain't it. But that is it. I remember that. But that ain't it. And y'all ain't say nothing. Y'all ain't y'all. What y'all say? Y'all ain't know what the Bible say either. <laughs> that's sad. Look, y'all don't fail the test. Look, I got y'all. No, I'm joking. I ain't get y'all. I was really riding out too. I'm riding out like that ain't it. That's it. Cause I got it here, but that ain't the one. All right, that was a sound check, sound check. Y'all ready now? All right, for real now, for real, for real. For real, 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 for real, for real. All right. <laughs> Romans 12, verse number one. Okay. And so, dear brothers and sisters. Yeah, okay, I'm talking. All right, all right. Pray the Lord. All right. Y'all should have made all that noise when I was reading the wrong one. <laughs> I plead you with, I plead, I plead with you, excuse me, to give your bodies to God because all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way <laughs> to worship him. Don't copy. Come on, somebody say, don't copy. don't copy. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. But let God transform. Somebody say transform. You can write it down. You can highlight it, whatever you have. You could very important word that we're going to spend a briefly amount of time with. That word transform means to metamorpho. That means to uh, come from one position to a place to another position. I also like to call it you leave from one stage of life to another stage of life. I also like to look at it as you're going from one level to the next level. Anybody don't mind going to another level? Yeah. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to try it one more time. Does anybody here, you want, do you want to go to the next level? Yeah. How many of you okay with just being average? All right. I mean, I know we can say, I ain't average. The Bible says, but right now, reality is well, where we're at right now, you know, we, we, can, we can be in an average situation. Meaning that we read something in the word, but it's not what God said, so therefore I got to catch up. Amen. I don't know about you, but when I read the Bible and it says that I'm supposed to be the head and not the tail, my faith now is in target of headship. Glory to God. Y'all with me? When I read that I'm supposed to be the lender and not the borrower, my faith now, my expectation is now is to be the lender and not the borrower. And I know people say, well, you got to be content where you are. That has nothing to do with it. It's your faith. It's your expectation. So now the problem is, is that if you have no expectation, then your hope, your hope has no work. I'm going to say it again. If you have no expectations, then your hope has no work. And if your hope have no work, then there's no need to faith for faith. Because faith is the substance of what you hope for. If I'm, if I'm not hoping for anything because I'm not expecting nothing, then there's no need for hope. There's no need for faith. You're just okay where you at. But we're people here. We're full of faith. To be full of faith means that we're full of expectations. Glory to God. Come on now. We're full of expectations. I'm going to say it again. We're, we're full of expectations around here. My God, Jesus, I see what you were saying earlier, baby. 
God. Something wrong out here? All right, just check it now. It's like it's snowing outside. So don't copy the behavior and the custom of this world, but let God transform you into a new person. Say new person. How? How does God transform you into a new person? By changing the way you think. Once you change the way you think, then you will begin to learn. But you can't start learning until you change the way you think. Because once again, people, people go to seminars. I know people that go to business seminars. They, they do all kind of things. And they say, you know what? I'm going to do this better. I'm going to do that better. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And we, we all built up on what we're going to do. But yet still we leave and still think the same way. When Jesus came, he said, hey, listen, repent. Repent. For the kingdom of God is, has arrived. The kingdom of God has arrived right here in, on earth, right in the midst of you. The kingdom of God has arrived. He said, believe the gospel. But he said, repent first. You repent. Once you repent, change the way you think, then you can believe. Believing is not changing the way you think. Believing has uh, uh, something to do. It is a process of changing the way you think. But I know if you change the way you think based upon how you believe and what you believe. I know if you change the way you think because how you start acting. Watch this here. How you start talking. You can't tell me that you're a new person, but you still have the same conversation. Girl, I'm just trying to survive. You trying to what? You trying to survive. Girl, I'm just trying to make it. You trying to make it? I was talking to somebody the other day, and they were talking to him on the phone. They was like, how you doing? I'm just hanging in here. No, you got to get hung up on we don't hang in there. I know the song say, hang on, no, but we don't hang on. When you're hanging, you have no, you, you, come on, you have no control. You're just hanging. When somebody is hanging, do they have control? No, they hanging. Don't act like you don't have control. You have, you have, y'all with me? You have the ability to dominate. You have full control. You, watch this here. You have more control than God does. I know we don't like to hear that. Oh, you preaching heresy. No, I'm not, because God can't make nothing happen for you that you don't want. He say, whatsoever you desire when you pray, believe. Whatever you forbid on earth shall be forbid. Whatever you allow shall be allowed. Why? Because I've given you jurisdiction over where you are at down here on earth. Oh, the devil trying to, the devil has no authority. We just talked about this Wednesday night. He has no control down here. But what you give him, because you don't want to have the authority. So when you're walking around your house and you're saying certain things, don't say, man, dog, I'm just, am, I, am I ever going to get over this hump? Of course you are. Get over it. Well, Pastor, that's easier said than done. I, that's why you're never going to get over it, because I'm talking to you and I'm listening to how you talk. Your, your speech is, is bad. You speaking wrong. So what does the Bible say? Transform what? By the renewing of your mind, the way you think. Change the way you think. Some of us, we, what I'm saying us, that's everybody. We have a bad way of thinking things. Now, I know it's not easy because we've been trained for so long. We've been accustomed to things for so long. But this is what the Bible says. Don't copy the behavior of the world. Message Bible say, don't change your culture. I know your culture, your culture means your house, your family. <laughs> you know, I know you go to family reunions and they all have pity parties and this and that there. And you tell me, I ain't tired. There ain't nothing. Where I've been tired in all these years and I ain't getting nothing out of it. I've been going to church all these years and I've been doing this all these years. And I don't see no benefit of this. I don't see no benefit of that. Now watch this here. If you're saying that out your mouth, guess what? That's really what you believe. And you know what? God cannot deliver nothing outside of your faith. Let me see who's writing that down. Not too many. Okay, pray the Lord, because I'm, I'm going to say it another way. God cannot deliver anything outside of what you believe. So if you don't believe it, God can't make it happen. Period. 
Well, Pat, well, Pat, you don't understand, brother. Ed, you don't understand this and that. I understand what you're saying, but we don't go by what we see. <laughs> That's not how we live. I don't care what that X-ray say. I trust God. That's why, we're, that's why we're talking about kingdom faith. Because my confidence and my faith is in my king. It's not in man. It's not in, it's not in the, no, the system of the world. It's my, my faith, my confidence, my belief is not predicated on a carnal person in this world. They're waiting for a government. I'm not waiting for the government, that government. I'm, waiting, I'm, I'm not even waiting, period. Because the Bible don't tell you necessarily to wait for it. He tell you to demand it. Yeah, you say, you say whatever you call it, you demand it. You say, I'm up, I'm, I am in heaven at the right hand of God, making sure that whatever you ask for, you receive it. As long as, as, long as faith opens the door. Because faith is that access. You can't fake faith. Faith cannot be faith. Because faith is tried. Oh, come on now. Don't act like y'all know how people, well, you really know somebody real when they go through something. Faith can't be faith. We can even say, oh, I'm full of faith. I believe in God. This is until you go through some fire. And the amazing part is you know the religious churches because when something happens, they get missing. Watch this here. They get missing when something happens. And when something good is going on, they come just to tell you about what's good, and then they don't come back no more. But that's not the faith of God. That's not kingdom faith. Kingdom faith is whether it's good or bad, I'm still believing. I'm still trusting. Come on now. I'm still. I'm, why? Because once again, I'm, I'm going from one level to the next. If I'm believing God for my healing, if I'm believing God for complete healing in my body, Every level, every stage is a celebration. If I couldn't bend my knees and I'm bending my knees, Father, I thank God I'm bending my knees. If I couldn't wiggle my toes and now my toes wiggling, I thank God I'm wiggling my toes. If I couldn't stand up and now I'm standing, oh, yeah, Lord, I'm not, I, 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 not, not, no, what's going on? Oh, Lord, I, I used to couldn't do this, but now, God, I'm in, pro faith is progressive. Bible say we go from faith to faith. I ain't going to keep on having past faith or past testimonies of what my faith did and what, what God has done for me. What, is, what have you done for me lately? Yeah, God gave you that promotion. Now, what's next? Well, I'm just trying to take it one day at a time. No, you cannot tell you. Listen. You just, everybody here can believe. We all can come in here right now that's watching here live and that's here right here in person. We all at the same time can go to God and believe the most ridiculous, outrageous, extravagant dream in the world. The biggest you can ever think. Think with no price tag. Think with no boundaries. Guess what? It still does not dent God's pocket. Oh, okay. Because whatever all us think God can afford. Oh, my God. Whatever you believe, I don't care. Oh, wait, you don't understand it's going to take years. It don't have to take years because God can do it today. He can do it right. He can meet everybody need right now today. That dream house, you can get it today. That, that promotion, you can get today. Come on. That miracle, you can get today. According to the word, guess what? It is already done anyway. He's already, he has already filled your capacity. Somebody shout see. Okay, I'm going to shift. I'm going to shift. Go to, go to Genesis chapter 1. You know, I've, I've, been, I've been reading and studying sermon preps and things to that extent. And um, I come with a preparation mindset that I'm going to use some of the techniques that I've just learned. But when the Lord say turn the page, them techniques just go to the, another day. <laughs> they just go somewhere else. Oh, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. Jesus. Lord, have mercy. Watch this here. <laughs> go to Genesis chapter, uh, uh, let's go to verse 26. And 
And it says this here, it says, all right. Well, let's just go to verse 28 for time's sake. Because we know verse 26, verse 26, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish and so forth and so on. And then verse 27, it says, then it says, uh, so God created human beings in his own image, in his own likeness. God created him, male and female created him them. Verse 28 is what I want you to pay attention to. Then God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and govern it. Reign over the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, and all the animals that scurry along the ground. Watch this here. Verse 29 is what I want you to pay attention to. Then God said, look, I have given you every seed-bearing plant throughout the earth and all the fruit trees for your food. Now, what's that important? Seed-bearing. Seed-bearing. Reason why I want you to say seed-bearing plant is to let you know that and I'm going to direct you back to verse 28, that God did everything in seed form, right? And I'm going to explain to you why. Because if you read it, it says, throughout all the earth and all the fruit trees for your food. You see that in verse 29? So it say fruit trees. Somebody say fruit. fruit. Now, let's go up at verse 28. Then God blessed him and said, be fruitful. So you can't be fruitful unless you are seedful. You can't be fruitful unless you are seedful. So I'm here to tell you, your issue is not your supply. Your issue is that you don't know your seed. You're trying to, you're trying to, you're trying to bear somebody else's fruit when you got your own seed to bear your own fruit. You with me? The special thing about seed is everything is already built inside of the seed. So if you are seed form, then there's nothing, there, everything that you need is already inside of the what? The seed. Say, I am, I am. seed. I know we go through church and we say, you appear here all throughout, we're going to say, come on, sow your seed. Well, the Bible also say the, the, word, the, the word of God is also seed. So you sow the word, you sow in seed. Money is just not only the seed that we sow and things to that extent. So your seed is, is you, you're also seed. So you got to look at yourself as seed. Me and my wife had the discussion yesterday just because I hear the Lord telling me to do it. I'm going to do it. You got to understand, every, all seed, how many people that like planting and everything, and, you know, farming, anybody like, like to plant gardens and things to that extent? Right, okay. Now, what happens is when you plant, if I give everybody some seed, we did this a few years ago, if everybody gets some seed, right, would the seed grow? Huh? You got to plant it. What are you going to plant it in? Soil. So if you are seed, right, the word has already declared for you to be fruitful. I can't be fruitful. I have the potential to be fruitful. But I need an environment for fruitfulness. The problem with us is we, because of the way we think and our environment, which is our soil, that's why you can't get to the next level because you're not in good soil. So you're trying to get God to produce something that he called you to do in the beginning, but you can't do it because your soil is bad. So you want to know why you, why you have not been growing in the things of God is because you're not around a good environment because your environment is soil. So wherever you put yourself being seed in, in that environment, then now you cannot become what God has called you to become. That's why Romans 12 and 1 and 2 says, you know, don't copy the behavior of your the custom of your, your culture and everything else. We need to, you need to have another way of thinking. Like he did Abraham. Let me get you from out of that environment. Move from that environment because where, you, where I want you to go, nobody that's around, nobody in that environment can help you get there. So I got to detach you from that environment so you can become greatness where I want you to become greatness. Because everywhere, where everybody you talk to now, they're in survivor mode, but you believe in me to thrive. So I got to get you out of that environment because you're just trying to hold on. 
but I want to hold on. I want to be the fruit tree so somebody else can eat off of what God has blessed me with. Oh, come on now. So you got to get from a right. That's why I tell people, don't, don't let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good and edifying. So don't talk to me like that. I don't want to hear that because if I hear it, then if I hear it, that's how faith comes. You go, you messing me up. I can't hang around y'all like that no more. Trust me, I'm a product of it, of, of certain things. I can't, I can't do that no more. I have friends I got to detach from, people I detach from. There's even conversations with my own family and people that I'm not very close with. I got to say, no, no, don't do that no more. Because it makes you start trans going the opposite direction. It can get you some issues unnecessarily. So you got to say, you know what? I got to protect the seed. Because God put me down here on seed form, and he said, I put greatness in you. That acorn, people don't thank God for the acorn. They're like, they, they grateful for the, the oak tree. But the oak, the acorn knows the whole time that I have a potential of an oak tree. But you, did, you, you are, watch this here, you are despising my oak tree stage and not realizing my, 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 my uh, uh, acorn stage and not realizing that I have the potential to be an oak tree. So don't, that's why the Bible said don't let nobody despise your youth. Your youth is the very beginning of what you're about to become. Oh, my God. Come on now. So right now, you may be in a position where you're just making it check by check. But as I look in the mirror, I don't see check by check. I see billionaire status. I see millionaire status. Come on now. I may look in the mirror, and I may be in a wheelchair. I may be walking. I may be taking prescriptions. But that ain't what I see. Because as far as I can see, God can deliver. Oh, are y'all with me? That's what he told Abraham. As far as look to the east, look to the west, the north, and the south. As far as you can see, I can make it happen. The problem is you ain't seeing far enough. You just seeing today. God say, look at your future. Look big in the future. Whatever you see, I can make it happen. You just look at that mango seed like, oh, it's only a mango seed. And that mango seed like, no, I'm not. I can get you out of debt. I have the potential to change your life, change your family life, change everybody else's life that come into I can, I can, I have the potential to get you in front of kings and priests and presidents and everybody else. But you got to believe in me, even though I'm a mango seed right now. But now, don't put, why are you going to throw me in a trash can? Because you don't respect the potential of it. People that commit suicide, they don't respect the potential that God put inside of them. Yeah. Your environment. I told you the other day we were talking, I say, I'm the seed, but I am so oh, I am also soil. So I gotta find people that I can put myself inside of. But now I gotta make sure that I'm soil, good soil, so people can put themselves inside of me. Because now people I want people to say. Since we've been connected to full of faith, that soil, I've grown. Yeah. Oh, come on now. <laughs> then I want people to say, you know, and then I want to be, you know, since that person got connected to full of faith. And full of faith got connected to that person. Full of faith has changed. Yeah. See, that's what it's about. It's about understanding that I'm seed and I'm soil. I, I help people grow and, and people help me grow. So if you, if you, if you, if I'm, have been my, if I've been in your relationship, if I've been in relationship with you and I've been connected to you for years, I've been talking to you for years, and all I've been getting is weeds, I got to find another environment. Come on now, y'all with me or not? This is the, what the enemy wants to do. He wants to get in your mind to make you think that you're, you're not, it's you, it's you, it's you. Well, God did not, oh Lord help me Jesus. The Bible says that we are not from incorruptible seed. So there's nothing wrong with the seed that's in you. It's the environment that you're around. It's the thought process that you have. The seed that comes from God is good because you you don't come from incorruptible seed. So the issue is not the seed. The issue is what you're around. It's God desire that everybody heal. It's God desire that no man perish. It's God's desire that we all have all sufficiency in all things. That's the desire. But the Bible said, I take pleasure in the prosperity of my people. So God wants you to prosper. Well, I understand that, Ian, but why I ain't prospering? Check your environment. How you thinking? 
Are you thinking small or are you thinking big? When you start thinking small, guess what God does? He stops listening. He gets offended. He's like, how, how in the world I can tell them I'm this big, great God? I do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you can, above all that you can ask or think. And all you can sit there and think about is a chicken sandwich for dinner tonight. You got to be a fool. We, we spend time praying and thanking God, and there's nothing wrong with thanking God for the little things. Right? But, but I'm going to be honest with you, a lot of those little things you're thanking God for, God ain't even do it. Paying your bill? No, you went to work, and you got a paycheck. That happened. I heard that religious person, but I had to get a job. You applied for it. You went to school for it. I know I had to, they had to hire me. That's good. All that's good and dandy. But guess what? God said to himself, you've done that on your own. What, what have I done for you? And the only thing we got is woke me up this morning. And that's all you consider me as? Just a wake me up God? Nobody in the Bible that you've read, tell me one prophet, tell me Abraham, tell me Jacob, tell me anybody, where they say all they thought of and the only thing they came to God where they found righteous, their faith, the only thing they thought about with God was just waking me up in the morning. Show me any scripture about that. But we get religious, and that's all. Well, I just better be grateful. God woke you up this morning. He didn't have to do that. Well, really, you don't have to do it. All you got to do is just say, Father, take me, and you'll go. And he'll look at you and say, well, why am I here so early? Because you asked me to bring you here. I got to deliver what you say. So who did it? You did it or God did it? Jesus said, if you say to this fig tree, if you say to this mountain, be lifted up, it shall obey you. So who did it? God did it? We can say, we can get rid of it and say, yeah, God did it. Jesus said, no, you did it. Y'all think I'm lying? The lady with the issue of blood for 12 years. What is she, what is she, well, he, she had to tell Jesus what I did. So your faith, your faith, can, your faith can strip power. Your faith can strip power. Your faith can strip the anointing. She told Jesus, say, listen, I've been dealing with this for 12 years, but I heard about you and this and that, that. I heard about you healing people. I heard about you doing all this. So I said to myself, so I said to myself, if I can touch the hem of your garment, I will be made whole. And you say, what? Yeah, I had to go. I had to. I, it was times I, had, I was illegal, but I knew I was taking a risk. Faith don't take no risk. That's a lie. I had to take a risk, knowing that if anybody see me in my state, they can kill me. But I didn't care. I, I, there was a point in time that I had, because you were so surrounded and crowded up, I couldn't even walk. I had to crawl. I was persistent to get to where my faith and where my thought was. Because I said to myself back in my house, if I can get to full of faith, my body can be made whole. If I can get to this here, to hear this word, I can, if I can just, I don't care what Pastor Ed got playing on Sunday, Lord, but we about to, I'm about to shift it. Why? Because faith can change laws. Faith can subdue kingdoms. Faith, are y'all with me? Faith can do that. So I can have a plan right there in the house on what's going to be said, and your faith can make me shift. Why? Because you say, I don't know what it is, Lord. I need a word today. I need to be delivered today. I need to be set free today because the day is my last day of flipping pennies. The day is my last day of living this life. The day is my last day of feeling this way. The day is, am I by myself or not? You got to make a decision. Like, today is that day. Jesus told that lady, she said, you say, well, well, dog, okay. Well, according to your faith, be made whole according to your faith. So whatever you believe, you got to get it. Oh, come on, say it's mine because I believe it. Say be transformed by the renew of your mind. You got to be retrained. You got to get that mind transformed. Watch this here. You can go back to uh, Romans 12. Seed form. Don't be hanging around people that ain't going nowhere to grow. They ain't growing. They don't want to grow. They want to, all they're talking about is, you know, just making it and surviving. I can't be around you. I can't be around you. 
can't, I can't do it. I'm sorry, I can't do it. You, it ain't about, you know, it ain't about all that. I got to get in an environment that challenged me. I got to get in an environment that's going to push me. I got to hear get a word that's going to make me uncomfortable to where I can't sleep. So I got to say, well, Father, give me that wisdom to, be, to get to that point. I got to get around people to where I'm looking at things and seeing things and they, and they just say, you know what? I was at that level before, but I trust God and I kept on pressuring God. I kept on believing God. I kept on doing this here. And now it ain't because, well, I just sold a thousand dollars and now I got it. No, because when you, if you sow a thousand dollars and God give it to you, when that thing get tested, you're going to lose it. But when you put faith to work and you've been believing God and trusting God and believing God and trusting God and the storm come but you still believe it and the fire come and you still believe it and the diagnosis come and you still believe it and the hatred come and you still believe it and you're losing friends but you still believe it and when that thing come it's like whoa it ain't nothing not death not life not nothing nothing can hurt them they fully believe why because that's what the enemy wants you to do he wants you to curse God and die. That's what it is. What is faith? Faith, and just for the simple part of it, faith is belief. Faith is belief. It's believing. It's belief. It's believing. Faith is, I like this one here, is firm persuasion. Firm persuasion. We're kingdom citizens. We have kingdom faith. I don't care what the doctors say. I don't care what my accountants say. I don't care what my uh, the, 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 the universities say, the colleges say, what the, what the law systems say, and everything else. That is, watch this here. That is called, write this word down. That is called information. That diagnosis that the doctor gave you, that is called information. That's all it is. They're just informing you of what they found. They, that's all they just informing you. For the believers, we can get to a greater level of information. Yes, sir. For those that don't have faith, those that don't trust God, those that don't believe God, that's all they got to stand on is information. Unfortunately, the church folk, we believe information more than revelation. The doctor told me that I got eight months to live. And I ain't even started what God said. Well, what, okay, well, why are you acting that way then? Well, I'm just, you know, uh, uh, I'm just, you ain't say nothing yet. Why are you tripping? Well, the, here we go, here we go. Well, the doctor, the God did give the, the doctor's knowledge, yeah, to be able to inform you. But the doctor will tell you that we practicing. My practice may not help, but there's a chance that it will. I've heard doctors, I've heard my own doctor with his own mouth say, listen, you, this will never be the same, or this and that there, as long as you did, as long as you that there. But all I can tell you is you got to believe in a higher power. I know some of us, everybody here got a testimony and heard the doctor say, we've done all that we can do. But when all that man has done ends is when all, and all that God is begins. I know I got to repeat it again because some people ain't paying attention. When all that man has done ends is when all that God has done begins. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So how, how do I get the God? How do I get to the finished work of God to begin? Let whatever man say in. Even though I just heard it today, I can let what you just told me in today. So God can begin. You said I am. Thank you. But God said this, because I got to believe the report of the king. That's why you got to be here on Wednesday nights, because I'm trying to tell you, you will never be broke. You will never be sick another day of your life. Long term is just a process to test my faith. My faith will remain. People are going to talk about you. People are going to put you all on YouTube and Instagram and all this here, and your friends are going to mimic you and market you. But at the end of the day, when they see the blessings of God superimpose and invade your life, they cannot deny what God said. They cannot deny what they see. Yeah, I know you was bankrupt, but look at God now. You have all sufficiency now. You went from bankrupt 
to doggone prospering in everything. Girl, how you did that? I trust God. Yeah, I, yeah it didn't take more than that. It ain't, that's all it took. Only believe, only believe, only believe. That's the only requirement, only believe. Somebody say transform. Watch this here. Transformation doesn't happen until you get these three things. Watch this here. Number one, better information. You got to get better information. What do I mean by that? You get a report, you get the scripture, find out what the word of God says. You're struggling financially, you're a kingdom citizen. The doctor's not your king. Your accountant's not your king. You're a kingdom citizen. That means that I have now surrendered my life to Jesus. Jesus is my king. My king is sovereign. My king rules. My king reigns. My king says that, that uh, uh, all authority, all power has been given to me on earth and in heaven. So if my king says that, then I'm going by the word of my king. We talked about that Wednesday night. So because I got to get information on what my king says. So I know I may be sick, but my king says I'm healed. I know I may be struggling financially, but my king said, well, my, my king said, I became uh, poor so you can be rich. Not just spiritually rich. All kind of riches. Because he was never, he, and now people say, yeah, but, yeah, but Jesus wasn't rich. You a lie. He was rich when he was a baby. Do you not realize what they brought to him when he was, when he was, Read the, read the word. Did they not bring him frankincense and myrrh and diamonds and gold and all kind of everything right there in the manger, all kind of jewels? Let me tell you how rich Jesus was. The lady got the most expensive oil to wash his feet with. Imagine taking creed to clean somebody's feet with. Some people looked up like, what? No, that's about $700. I told my I ain't been wash my clean nobody's feet with that. No, because she just realized the cost of this has nothing to deal with the cost that you about to pay for me. <laughs> and the Lord told me this here one day. I don't know if this the, I'm just just say this is the revelation God gave Ed. Or oh, Pastor Ed, whichever one you want to call me, it doesn't matter right now. You know, is this for you? Well, Pastor Ed, I got reprimanded for that the other day. Watch this here. My like Lord told me this here. I was guys of course I say, Lord, why does he wash his feet with that? He said, because this is for me now. He said, because she knew that everything, everything is getting ready to be up under those same feet. Because in the royalty, in royalty, the feet of the king. Is a head is head and, and exemplifies everything that that king is over. Authority over. So when she was washing his feet, cleaning his feet, things to that extent, like 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 our feet. You say you're gonna put you're gonna put your image upon your feet, and you're gonna put this in your footstools and everything, you know all that footstool feet footstool. That means where's your foot? The bottom. Everything under your feet, you do what? Walk on it. It has no authority. So when I anoint my feet, that means I'm letting everything know that you can't get above ground because I got authority over you. Oh, come on now. So, so it, if you don't, you don't have authority over me, cancer. You don't have authority over me. My feet is anointed. Come on now. I'm not even going to let you get in the fourth. You're not even on my level. If I let you get above my feet, now I got, you ain't even on my level. Oh, help me, Jesus. You ain't on my level. You're subordinate to me. Like, you're subordinate to me. High blood pressure, you're subordinate to me. That's the authority that we have. The main problem God had with Adam and Eve was how you listen to somebody and take an order for somebody that's beneath you. And you say, Adam, where are you? You lost position. Why? Because you don't drop down a level. You're sitting there listening or you know, taking orders for somebody and something that you got dominion over. 
Don't let that cancer have dominion over you. Don't let that lack have dominion. Don't let that diabetes. Don't let that high blood pressure. Don't let them kidney stone. Don't let none of that garbage have dominion over you. You got to get you gotta get your mind right. I got to change the way I think and realize that I'm a child of the most high God. I'm a kingdom citizen. I have authority. I have rights. And I ain't going to let you bring me down to anything less. Get from around me. Don't talk to me no more. Hang up. I don't care. Talk about me. I don't care. I know what I have the right to of. Come on, give God praise for that. Y'all can do better than that. I'm talking about you have the authority to change your situation right now. You can change it today. You can transform it today. 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 That's why we come to church. You on live stream. So you can get into an environment. Your home ain't, oh, oh Lord Jesus. I had to hold that, but you know I'm going to say it anyway, right? Your, whole, your home ain't good soil. You got some drugs in there probably. You got some alcohol probably in there. You probably got some right, wrong people on your TV that you be watching with. You got to anoint that home and make it good soil. You think I'm lying because the devil, once you hear the word, somebody, okay, maybe it's just for me. Sometimes you hear the word, and then you go to an environment, and then you try to remember the word. You're like, what was the word about? Child, it was so good, I don't forgot. No, that's the devil done stripped you out of it. But when you're in an environment right here in the building, you all, oh, I'm lifted up. Oh, oh, today is my day. Oh, sickness, you got to go. Oh, diabetes, you got to go. Oh, yeah, I'm bigger now. I'm greater now. Where my pad at? Where my journal at? I'm about to change this. I'm about to do this here. I'm about to do that there. And then you get out there and your friend call, girl, let me tell you. And now you're like, for real? Now, now, hold on, no, baby, I don't got time for that right now. I, I got to get rid of this because I'm believing God for something bigger right now. You, you've been feeding that information in my ears long, long enough, and I'm still broke. I'm still struggling. Don't call me no more with that. Don't tell me no more. I got big things. I got my kids on drugs. I got my family this year. No, I, I'm, am I by myself on this or what? People are going to get upset and say, well, look, you think you're better than that. I am better than that. I shouldn't be like this right now. I should be better. I'm behind God's schedule. God had me a million the other day, and I'm still just trying to pay my light bill. God had me paying off somebody's house today, but I'm still trying to figure out where I'm going to get mine from. No, I got to catch up. Lord, superimpose me. Catch up, catch up, catch up. Anybody, you don't mind God catch you up? I received that. I feel a catch-up annoying on here. God's about to catch you up. Things about to happen so fast, you ain't going to have no control. He's about to make you. I'm talking about making you. You ain't going to know what happened. You ain't going to know why. You just going to say, Lord, I surrender. Make me. I believe. I believe. I believe. I'm like Mary. Be it unto me. Be it unto me. According to what you say, be it unto me. Then when you invite people to church, they're going to, they're going to, they, listen, they go, no, I'll beat you at your house, baby. I'll pick you up. No, I'm coming to your house because I want what you got. Because I know whatever, whatever you, whatever y'all got going on that full of faith, I know right now y'all must be getting some good word because I don't see transformation in your life. You will never be broke another day of your life. I don't got to ask you for no money. I'm going to put money in you through my mouth. You will never struggle another day. You will never be broke another day. You will never have another bill, another thing. Oh, I received that myself. There will be another dream that God showed you that you cannot even afford. He's going to finance everything. All you, if you dream, he pay. Come eat with no money. Glory to God. Number two, number one, get better information. Number two, number two, you got to apply it. You get the information, then now we got to use application. There's no transformation without information, without application. Once you get the information, once you apply it, then there's transformation that takes place. The problem is we, don't, we keep hearing the wrong information. You got to get the right information. I can't get in the kingdom alignment. I can't be aligned 
and have the mindset aligned with the kingdom if I don't hear what the king has to say. Romans 10, verse 17 says this here. Let's go there real quick. Romans 10, verse 17. Very familiar scripture. My God, I'm telling you, man, I don't, I don't know what I don't know what you've been thinking. I don't know who, who you've been listening to. But you you got to, my wife will tell you, man, I, I, read, I just, I don't listen. I, I, don't, I don't got time to listen to TV. I watch the football game because they ain't, they ain't telling me nothing. They, I'm just watching. That's entertainment for me. But all this other food is on TV. I don't got time for that because that thing getting into your spirit. And then now God's like, okay, you now you when you hear something, now you start believing something different. Now, I mean, I get tired of hearing people talking about TV things, and they're literally this is how ignorant things are and how powerful things are. You talk to people, they change the way they believe and what they think based upon an act. It's a fake. It's a movie. They're acting. Oh, that's, see, that's the reason. That's the problem I got with men right there. That's not real. That real person is married with kids and happy. But they're, they're letting you know on the show that they don't like men, but they really got, they really married for years and happy. Oh, I'm a, oh see, that's the problem. See, girl, you seen, you seen uh, uh, Lisa? Yeah, that's, I'm telling you, that's the problem. Lisa, just like Lisa. Girl, stop acting stupid. Lisa's married in real life. So now you, you, you are changing your life to fake Lisa, but the real Lisa is a life that you really want. <laughs> like you watch Good Doctor. It's so funny because people can never receive the real, the real life of the, the guy in Good Doctor. What's the guy's name? What's the, what's, his, what's the name of him? No, not his real name. Sean Murphy on Good Doctor. But when you see him in real life, you're thinking like, why he don't act like he act on TV? Because he's acting, duh. <laughs> and that's what, that's what happens. And that's what the enemy want to do. He wants you to live an acting life. He don't want you to live the real life. The real you is blessed, not cursed. The real you. So you've been living a life and looking in the mirror of an acting life. But God really got greater plans for you. But you're still thinking what you see today is real. That ain't real. That's just a fake. That's deception. Deep down inside of you, what God put inside of you is something greater, something better, something more powerful, something more peaceful. Come on now. Are y'all with me? Something greater. Yes. 